Good evening. I'd like to call the Monday, October 3rd, regu regularly scheduled Berlin Select Board to order. With us tonight on my left is Flo Smith, on the far left, Carl Parton. To my right is Joe Staub. Dave Sawyer is with us on audio. Uh, I'm Brad Town. With us also is Vince Connie, Town Administrator, and Diane Isabel, Town Treasurer. Uh, additions or changes to the agenda? There are none. Public comment. Um, traffic sign request, Kim Mason. I'm Kim. Hi. Yeah. Um, so I live at 1264 Airport Road. Um, and I reached out to Vince. Hi, Vince. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Uh, nice to meet you. Um, about the issue that we're having um, as you come over the hill, head towards Barry. Um, our driveway is the second drive at that hill, just as you go over the hill. Ours is the first, actually, on the left. The second one is Linda Winters, I believe. No, yeah, Linda Winters. And we're finding that um, as we stop to turn it out to our driveway, waiting for oncoming traffic from coming from Barry, that vehicles are coming over that hill quite fast. And we have had a few near misses where they actually have to hit their brakes and swerve to the right. So my, I, when I reached out to Vince in August, it was to see if there was some sort of sign that might be able to go up back by where it says 40 miles per hour, which is not what these people are driving. Um, if we could get something that just said caution, hit and drive on the left, or something like that. Um, when I reached out to Vince, he told me that um, the select board had said that that would not be something that they felt, um, I'm not sure exactly the wording, I have it written here, that uh, wouldn't help improve the situation. Um, he also indicated to me that the police were going to monitor that area between the Dodge Hill Farm and the Berlin Line. Um, now, we're home all the time. I'm not going to say they're not monitoring. I'm just saying that we don't see it very often. We might see a cargo, a police car go down maybe two, three times a week, turn around and come back up. It doesn't feel like the police are actually monitoring it with radar or anything like that. And I have spoken to the uh, chief of police about getting one over the last couple of years, getting one of those radar <laughs> type things to monitor what the speed is between the Dodge Farm and the town line. I don't, I'm sure you all know that road. It comes over a hill, it's a big dip, and then it goes up past um, Benoit's. And they're using that road as a racetrack. Not everyone, but a lot of people. Um, and my fear for us is that we're going to get rear-ended right there trying to turn into our driveway. We're very cautious coming up the hill. We, we have our flicker on early, <coughs> trying to drive as slow as you can without them getting irritated behind us. Um, but I thought, I've seen those signs. I don't know that they would deter somebody, but my thought is it couldn't hurt. So that's why I'm here. Now, when you say sign, what are you talking about for a sign? Just, well, just, uh, just something that, you know, that one of those or uh, yellow signs that just says slow, hidden drive, or hidden drive on left, or, you know, what I, the ones that yeah. that you see. It may not do anything, but it might, too. Yeah. I mean, how would we know unless it was there? <laughs> Question. So, for a hidden drive, what is the distance, do we know? Well, be under the be probably under the uh, state standard, which is 50 feet. So I don't necessarily think a hidden drive ahead is, is going to work or be the right sign, um, just because of that. We we do have a sign that has the speed limit that it'll post. It gets moved around a little bit, Chief. Yeah, we have a couple of options that we try to rotate through the town. We have a, a speed sign that will track some data, and I, we think we put it out there in your area before, but it was in the springtime, and I can't recall what the data said off the top of my head. Um, you're absolutely right. Some people are just flying through there, 
and yeah. sporadic enforcement, which is pretty much what we're limited to because of staffing issues, uh, isn't very preventative, I guess. Uh, we do have another sign that will, you know, we can transport around. It's like an actual sign post that will track people's speed. Again, I'm not sure how much of a deterrent that is, or that is pretty much always available to us. And, uh, if you think that would help, we can put that I mean, out. I've but, seen the sign on the flats as by the airport, right. but I have not seen anything between the Dodge yeah. Hill, the Dodge Farm, mm -hmm. and the, the town line. That's the trailer you're talking about, right? The speed trailer that actually, yeah. 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 And there's something else you said? I think we have an actual sign, too. But that doesn't track data, but it's solar powered and it'll let people know what the speed is. And uh, we're pretty flexible, I think, of where we put that. I think there's some restrictions, but I don't know why we couldn't put it closer to your residence, if you think that would be helpful. Yeah, I, I, I do. I, I think that, I mean, I've, I've called 911 several times, and the person I spoke to, it, it always says, yes, they're driving between 70 and 80 miles an hour on that road versus right. 40. Yeah. That's what the person had told me that answered the phone, and I said, "Well, I'm more than police, I'm more than happy to. Ha I mean, I even offered my driveway as a place to monitor if there was a need for that. Um, I just <coughs> sorry. What did you want to say? To um, no, no. I mean, I, when the officers over are directed to patrol that road at least once or twice during each shift. Um, I, I can't dedicate." any more resources other than that. Um, the state police answer our phones on 911, so I don't know how they know how fast people are going on that road. I don't doubt that people are speeding at all. Do you feel that having the uh, speed trailer put up there would help out? It can hurt. I don't think there's a spot for the speed trailer, but the speed sign sounds like a good idea. There's probably a spot on the flats it's itself that we could put the on, on the flats, like. Yeah, I'm sure we can find a location for it. It would be safe and visible. She is at your, your residence is in a bad location, absolutely. They come right over the crest there. Yeah, and they just yeah. don't see the driveway. Go ahead. Go. Question for you, Chief. Mm -hmm. What do you do with the data that is collected with the the speed of a trailer? Um, it doesn't, it will print it out. Okay. Uh, once we put the trailer out somewhere, we collect it um, after a period of time and we can print out that data, but it doesn't save. So somebody will usually hand me the printout after it's been there for a week or so. And Do you use that data to determine maybe patrolling an area more than the more than another place? Um, usually it does help us prioritize things because sometimes okay. people are, like the speed is a lot worse than it actually is, and then the data will kind of show us that it's very sporadic. Yeah, there are a couple of bad players that are speeding throughout the day, but it doesn't really warrant us sitting out there for like a four-hour period hitting traffic. Like I said, it's, it's not every yeah. I mean, it's not yeah, that, every vehicle that's going by, but it's a lot of vehicles. Right. I'm, not, I'm not trying to make any kind of statement about your airport road. That is a bad stretch for sure. But there have been smaller streets, and people have this impression that you know, it's all day long. People are just going crazy up and down the road and then the data doesn't support that. But an airport one is a bad stretch for sure. Are they, Mr. Chair? Yeah. Uh, Dave Sawyer has a question. Yeah, Dave. Yeah, it's not so much a question as I'm sympathetic to, to her situation, but I will say this, in the last month, uh, I've been working up there. Uh, we've got a project right there. So I have seen increased patrols over the last month up there, but but she's very right. There, there's times that I've come down to the sign there at the end of the airport, and their their vehicles are a lot of vehicles are well in excess of the speed limit going through there. Uh, and, and the problem is, it's it's not any certain time of the day. It's it's you know all hours of the day between that I've been up there between 7 a.m. and and, and 5 p.m. <laughs> So that's all I, I wanted to say. I just I, 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 I've seen the increased patrols up there the last month. Um, so uh, I don't know. It's, it's going to be hard unless uh, 
I, you know, I do believe that sign with the, the solar sign showing the speed limit uh, put before her driveway coming from the airport side would probably would probably be a, would probably help a little. Uh, I don't know how much of a deterrent it will be, but it, it would probably draw people's attentions to the speeds they're actually going. Is there a vehicle, vehicle's turning sign, warning sign? You can probably sign to say whatever you want, right? But, yeah. Uh, and the, um, one of the trouble with signs is speed limit's also a sign. And right. people, yeah. were, yeah. <laughs> and people yeah. are ignoring that apparently. Right. Uh, but for what it's worth, I, I would support a blind driveway sign or something to that effect. The cost is minimal compared to it, it may do nothing, but it's better than doing nothing, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it is uh, who would put that up, to, uh, Tim? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I would put that up. How much are the signs? Uh, I'd have to check. I don't know the cost of the blind driveway sign. I'm guessing somewhere between thirty-five and forty-five dollars, probably. In his budget. We can find it. Uh, anything else on this? Uh, motion? I'd make a motion to uh, approve a sign uh, that would be the blind drive or something to that effect in the area of, uh, of the residence uh, on the airport road. Here? Yep. I'd, I'd recommend two, one from each direction. Yep. yep. Uh, I one. second that with uh, one for each direction. Okay, uh, any further discussion on this? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for bringing the chart. It's you know, okay. you want, you want any updates on the sign, just give me a call. Okay. Make sure we get them all Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. I hope you need to. Okay. Um, airport Road pothole issue. Brenda Lamphere. That's me. Peculiar enough, Airport Road. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I... Um, was required to replace all my tires due to a pothole that I hit on Airport Road. Um, that was rather large and deep, and there was no way for me to avoid it because of oncoming traffic. Um, my concern is that there was no cone, no flag, no indication of this hole in the road. And I feel a blessing on this because I hit it because there was a group of motorcycles that came after me. And if one of those had hit that, I would hate to have seen what had happened. Unfortunately, because I have an all-wheel drive car, I had to replace all four of my tires. And I would like to request a reimbursement because I feel that this was neglect on the highway department. I realize that there are people, everybody's short staff, and I get that. But this was something that was very dangerous to the community. And I think it should have been handled in a much better manner before somebody really gets hurt. And I do understand that it was filled the following day. I, I want to say in quick defense of the highway department, I saw them fill it one day. And with coal patch, the best you can possibly do, it was already, it was already hollowed out the next day. So I would, I, I'd be, Hesitant to say neglectful. I, I know they were there, but there's, when you have a pothole like this, no matter where it is, you can fill it, and the next day it can be it can be torn up again. But if uh, that's the case, they should at least have a cone there. Um, I'd like to. I'm also here for the same thing. I had to replace my rim and my tire. Was it the I same was day? Because we mine was four. on Friday. Well, mine was the 17th, and the mine was the 17th. Yeah, the and morning. the officer told me there was four people that hit um, that hole. But I've also been told, I, I'm a Vermonter, but I've lived in Maine for the last five years. I was here visiting, got here the day before, mm -hmm. and um, did had no idea. But everybody else seemed to know, and it's been here for over a year, from what I've been told, that same kind of hole when people have hit it. Um, that's what I was told from the hospital when I got to the hospital. I was like, oh, I had a flat tire. 
I probably wouldn't be here complaining about how much it cost me. I have a four hundred dollar bill for that, my tire and my rim, and a week and a half of boring in someone's car because I couldn't even get a rim for my car. Mm -hmm. um, but and like I said, I probably I don't know how many people haven't come because if I was able to get KW to fix my tire while I was at the doctor's office with my granddaughter that morning, I probably wouldn't have bothered. But because I had to wait for a rim and find a rim that I could afford um, and without a car for a week and a half, I thought, wow. And the fact that everybody said you should go to the town because that's been um, an issue. And this really caused a hard financial hardship for me. I just retired and I'm waiting for Social Security. Mm -hmm. So this is like my rent. So I would like to request the reimbursement. And you can have the other three tires if you want them. Brad, what's precedent? You've been on the select board for and I realize the statutes, but <laughs> yeah. this is you usually the way it the way it flies is um, if the if it was uh, somebody hits a pothole in the town or the town road crew is unaware, then it's uh, give it to an act of God, just like a windshield and a stone. Yeah. However, if the town did know about it and they were there was no uh, sign put up or no uh, cone or anything, then it's on the town. So this spot looks like it's a reoccurring issue. It's a huge, I have pictures. It's yeah, a huge, huge. Oh, okay. they yeah, it's do. a huge hole. There's two of them. I'm not sure which one too. I yeah. And I couldn't avoid it either by the time I saw it. Oncoming traffic and my car and at the, my room. And it is, it's right in the wheel track, uh, outside wheel track. It's, it's going to be one of those things that's reoccurring. How many times have we been out and fixed it? I don't know. Oh my God, that hole was that big in my tire. I couldn't believe it. Uh, you should see my room. <laughs> I was lucky that I thought they were going to have to replace mine. I was lucky I don't have it all built on. So I only have the one tire in the room. Okay. Uh, so the pat the they've cold patched it now. Yeah. By the sounds of things, maybe a couple times. You said it, they beat it out. I, I've seen it patched, and then I mean, I live on Airport Road too. I don't speed on it. <laughs> <laughs> and you but know where the bottles are. I, I, yeah, and and I am afraid are. that the patrol might think I've been drinking because I swerve around that pothole too. So. <laughs> they should at least put a cone up there or something. That's, That's just well, <laughs> If it's been repaired, then the, it's no longer an issue. The, the issue right now is uh, reimbursing for the for the two tires and the out of the five tires in the rim. Um, is there a motion on this? What, for discussion's sake? Yes. yes. Uh, did, does I anybody have, have your documentation? I have. Uh, uh, this this cost thing, of what I, I, I know. This lamp here is in your packet. No, yeah, you saw that. We have that. Uh, here's mine. Yeah. Oh, Brad, I, I have a question just uh, on the four tires there. It, is there the tires that are there? Is there any indication or anything on the map of what the wear was on those uh, on the four tires? No, the uh, the service center took in their their take on it was uh, that a new tire would throw the the ratio off yeah. for the four-wheel drive. Yeah, no, no, no. I understand all that on a four-wheel drive vehicle. <laughs> My question is, is how much use was on the tires that were there? How old were they before this bottle was hit? Mine, I got condition? last year, that front one yeah, was last year. Yeah, mine were not old either. So do we have an estimated mileage that was on the, on the four? Uh, on mine, I would say maybe 15. So then it'd be fair to say that probably a 30,000 mile tire that you got about 50% use out of the ones that were there. Yeah, 
I don't know what the, the mileage was on. You know, the trouble the trouble is it, it, it's it's not um, it's not the percent of wear is is that they have to re be replaced. No, I understand that. I just that that it does have in my mind maybe it has a little bit of value. I mean, if you hit if you hit these things and they've got five thousand miles on them, most of those tires are a thirty thousand mile tire. Well, then then that's an issue. But if you got half or three quarters, what what? Part percentage of in reimbursement should we be talking about full cost? I, you know, I, I in my mind, I don't know that I could go that way. I'm pretty sure it's full cost. Yeah, I can see what David's talking about. I mean, I live on Airport Road, and if my tires are about done, I might aim for that pothole. That's yeah. what David's saying. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, this one here that has the sidewall issue, the, the tread looks fairly decent on it. There's that one picture in your uh, in your pamphlet. Uh, but even the uh, even the bars on the top of the blocks is are still there. I would have had to replace them for a couple of years, well, at least a year. <laughs> Any more discussion on this? Just the, the second one. I don't know if anyone else has seen this yet. I'm going to say it along, but that's yeah, just uh, handwritten tow. Yeah, my son had it towed and he didn't get a receipt. It was 86 bucks. Yeah. But and the other was I end up a re uh, I got a used rim because it was 120. First uh, Chevy <laughs> rim was going to be 600 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> so I couldn't. <laughs> Now you said your total bill came, <coughs> came to two hundred and ten dollars. Mine was three hundred and ninety three sixty. And you're the Yours was six ten. The last one I sat on, the last board I was on, I had this happen. It folded up the A-frame of the car. Jeez. I was worried. I was yeah. afraid there's something else. Yeah. Under nine. I'm still hoping nothing goes after, but it's, it, they said it was fine. It looked okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's see here. Let me go back. Do we... Dave interrupted. So, uh, um, a motion on this one? <clears throat> For discussion at least? Or? Uh, I move to reimburse both victims of the airport road pothole for their tire and tires and rim respectively. Your second? I'll second. Okay. So how's the board feel on this? I know what statute says and we're pretty much on the hook. So 
<laughs> if no other discussion, all those in favor of the reimbursement? Aye. 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 Now, I do have a question. I need your address. Okay. Your information. So if I can get you to put that down. I have yours. I just want to make sure I have a current because I just need yeah. pen. You need a pen? Yeah, this is my current. Okay, so we need your current. I don't know if you Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you both. I get to pay my rent now. <laughs> Thank you. And once again, what was the total? Oh, I can wait. Three ninety three sixty. What's our total? Oh, three ninety. Okay. Three ninety. Thank you. 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 Thank Probably not next week because I think we're paving Johnson Pavings in town. But the following week, Tim has got uh, a roller, a hot box, and he's going to be covering all the paved roads in town with that hot box in a day or two's time to fix all the potholes again for this season. Uh, hopefully to get us through the winter, and we'll do more of the same. Probably make that a, a regular scheduled maintenance routine if we can borrow that hot box from Barry. That certainly sounds like money well spent. <laughs> Yeah. Do we have locations that are just uh, constantly a hassle? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Again, it, it depends on how when the coal patch is put in, right, and how it gets through the winter, if the plows peel it up or not. But it's usually within the same areas, right? Some of that coal patch, like Carl said, it's in one day. It could be out the next. Some will last for a couple of months. Um, but routinely, it's, you know, if you look at the road on, on Scott Hill, there's something going on underneath that's not helping as well because you can see the wheel ruts leading up to it. Um, so, you know, there's some other issues to look at, but uh, the plan is going forward to use regular hot mix instead of cold patch at least once, if not twice a season, and we'll, you know, we'll keep records of that and see how, how it holds up. See this one here that, that they hit. It looks almost like it's sand underneath and it's like it's shifted. So well, my suggestion moving forward would be that people report it to the police department and submit it to insurance. Just so we, the state wouldn't reimburse certain expenses without somebody going through their insurance first. And if you cover either it doesn't get covered by insurance or whatever remaining amount might not get covered by insurance, it's just deductible or something. Yeah. And if somebody brings a claim here, then that's it. Like, we don't have somebody come back and say, well, now my frame's damaged, too. So once you make a payout, that's it. Okay. Um, let's see. Good advice. Good advice. <laughs> What's that? I said that was good. Get your plan. Uh, let's see here. Uh, planning commission appointment. Darren Lay Sleeper. His interest, his letter is uh, in, the, in the package. It's, a, it's an email. Uh, Mr. Sleeper uh, is with us tonight. Uh, should the board have any questions for him, but he's ex certainly expressed an interest. And um, the planning committee is, uh, commission is waiting with open arms for, for him as well, I believe. <laughs> so I served on the planning commission 10 or 15 years ago, and I, I had quite an interview process, but. I, I will ask you, what made you want to uh, become a member of the Berlin Planning Commission? Hi, folks. <clears throat> I'm Theron. So I have been interested, I mean, I've been interested in, in getting more involved in in the town and, and doing something. Um, <clears throat> I did apply to be on the select board a couple years back um, and didn't, didn't quite get the votes, but um, 
I heard from my neighbor that he was leaving the planning commission and that uh, they would be looking for somebody else. So I figured I'd, I'd try to, uh, to join up and see how I can help and um, work on work on some of the, the big projects that I know the town has upcoming. So. <clears throat> Any other questions for Mr. Sleeper? Your motion? I make the motion to appoint Theron Lay Sleeper as a member of the Planning Commission and thank you for your interest. Thanks. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those, Aye. those opposed, motion carries. Um, that's in the package. Get the one. Okay. Um, Recreation Committee requests Tim Shea. Mr. Shea is here with us. Mm -hmm. to answer any okay. Yes, yeah, so we've got uh, two requests um, within our budget. Um, First one is we want to put up a scoreboard at the at the uh, baseball field at the school. Uh, we didn't get permission from the school, but we thought it'd be a nice addition to that complex. Uh, it's nothing fancy. It's you know it's manual, um, but it'll keep a kid out of trouble hopefully during the game yeah. and attentive. Um, and we do have uh, Paul Winters has made these. Uh, he did one in East Montpelier. There's another one in Middlesex. Um, the request for nine hundred and forty dollars. Uh, we do have money in the budget um, for this, and uh, then we'll just use some labor to dig some holes and, and uh, get some volunteers to help put it up. And hoping to do that before um, the snow flies, potentially, depending on weather nature. So um, that's the first request. The second is we've been working with. Um, the uh, conservation committee and just wanted to update the signs at the parks down at the dog river park there's really not a whole lot of signage there so just signage that what the facility is and then just some of the um, information about it and also what it's not or what it should be used for um, and similar we're going to update the sign at the parking area on uh, Berlin pond there it's just a little dated and uh, update those we work with the local uh, work safe up on uh, industrial lane. And now uh, we'll probably need a, maybe a little bit of help from the town. I don't know. We can probably put them in, but we might need Tim's help to okay. wait and see. Um, depending on the time you're getting those made. But uh, that request is for $206. What, what are the signs going to read? Um, I don't have all the verbiage, but it's basically. Um, informational um, as far as um, I should have printed out what it is and I can share that with you before we do it but we like I said we worked through the conservation committee as well just to get their blessings and sort of work obviously hand in hand on some of these efforts um, but it just updates it as far as um, uh, some of the what to do and what not to do in firearms and walking, you know, if you're walking around the pond, stay facing traffic, those sort of informational things um, that we're looking to update. And then the sign there is, I don't know, I think it's been there quite a while, it just is out of date. Um, so that was uh, two, two requests that we had this evening. Uh, and I can, uh, I do have a what the verbiage is. I can send that along if you want to table that one for now. That doesn't matter. That one's a little easier to pull the trigger later. What's their balance? I don't have that off the top of my head. I know it's at least a few thousand. I know they yeah. didn't get that. Okay. And at this point, I don't, yeah, we the ice rink's in good shape. We actually just had our work beat um, and got back. And certainly, thanks to uh, Vince and Tim, we did a lot of grades on the ice rink area so we're going to save a lot of water this year for flooding purposes but that there wasn't any requests there we should be in good shape for the ice rink and we bought the green ball equipment last year uh, that we'll be 
using this year. Uh, so I don't foresee any other requests at this juncture, certainly in the near future. Okay, uh, motion on this? I make a motion to approve the baseball scoreboard. Second. 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 Okay. Uh, any further discussion on this? Those in huh? favor? Uh, just real quick, uh, the, the, the motion was just on the baseball scoreboard. Yep. On the other, the other side. Okay, that's. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Yep. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. There's the ball. The ball score. Um, <coughs> so on the verbiage, on the next one. Um, I don't know how the board feels. Do you want to take and wait until? We see the verbiage, or do you want to take and make it uh, uh, a motion for it now? These are replacing older signs. Yeah, yeah. And the verbiage really, is going to be similar. Similar. It's a little updated because some of it's, but yes, it's similar. It's not the exact, but uh, and they're also you know signs that'll hold up over time. Dog River doesn't really have much signage at all there, so it's it's actually adding something that doesn't exist, and then okay, and then updating the one at. Uh, I myself, Brad, would like to, to, to wait until we've seen the verbiage just to, to, to see what it is. Are, are you making a motion to the table? I, I would make a motion to the table until the time that we see the verbiage on the signs. Do I hear a second? Second. Any further discussion? Sorry if, if that makes you have to come a second time. No. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Anything else? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dodge Farm Road Site Visit Decision on Issues. Uh, in your package, uh, there's a, a summary of what was decided from the board's site visit. Uh, I'm just looking for the uh, approval of the board that uh, didn't miss anything. Uh, or didn't put in something that uh, wasn't agreed upon, uh, that uh, I can uh, send this off officially to Dodge Farm. Dave, you have this uh, information in front of you? No, I do not, Brad. Uh, Vince, you want to read it? Sure. You should have it in your email, though, Dave. Yeah, let me let me grab that real quick. Okay, I'll, just check. Read I'll read it. It's in the, it's in the PDF attachment. Yeah. During the site visit, it was determined that at a minimum, the following would be required. More materials required from the previous cul-de-sac area to the Haskin driveway, approximately four to five inches. Need a crown in the road from previous cul-de-sac area down the entire road to pavements in accordance with section 21 of the acceptance of reclassification town highway policy that was previously provided. The right-hand ditch needs to be deeper, an additional 10 to 12 inches. Need to find the head of the culvert and clean it out on the culvert that's located about three quarters of the way up the hill. Uh, cut the pavement back at the Haskin driveway as discussed on site. And the shoulder needs to be removed to allow water to run off the roadway through the S corner area or rose, raise the road above the shoulder. Got that, Dave? Yes, yes. I just want to remind everybody, too, uh, there's a note at the bottom of this as well, that um, once the board agrees to accept the road, there's still a one-year waiting period 
as indicated in the policy before final acceptance is granted, and any issues that come up during that time are still the responsibility of the homeowners to take care of. To satisfy the town. So. Have a motion? Basically, we're just sending this off to them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I move to, yeah. to submit this to the homeowners association uh, for their review. Second. Oh. Any further discussion? Go. I don't necessarily think I like where it says shoulders need to be removed. I think shaped. Um, I, I think you could probably shape those to allow water to to run be off. to run off. I don't, yeah, I just don't like removed. <coughs> so you want to, you're recommending a change removed to shape? Sure. Okay. And uh, just for clarification, bullet point three, right hand ditch, and you're going up, up the hill. Yeah. yeah. Got it. You all set with those changes, Dave? Yeah, I, I just want to go on the record that, that you know, I, I'm still going to have problems only because precedent in my mind was set that these other developers in the past had had to pave those roads. Uh, but I'm OK with sending that in. I just at the time it comes to accepting it, uh, I personally I'll abstain from voting from it because I, I just feel the other contractors were made in the subdivisions to pave. I feel that they should have they should pave that that road up there. I wonder if uh, putting a, a caveat along with what we have for requirements for taking it over, uh, maybe a, a gravel tenure and if 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 there's any request by the homeowners association for it to be paved within a, the first 10 years or something that they'll still need to contribute toward that, even if the town takes it over as a dirt road. I don't know if anything like that has ever been done, but it would protect the town from, you know, getting requests in two years to have it paved. Yeah. Um, did you speak to Bob? Or Nick? I did, yeah. One of the things I, uh, I personally feel is, uh, any kind of development we have, there shouldn't be a gravel road. It should be paved. Mm -hmm. um, simply because it uh, it cuts down on overall maintenance. Yeah. So the, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the Partridge mm -hmm. Farm was a single developer who owned all the plots that built and sold the houses off the, off the paved road he put in, right? Whereas this is, land plots bought by individuals and then develop themselves. I'm not sure just how that... Well, yeah, go ahead, Dave. I, yeah, I just got that, uh, that that is partially correct, but when Fecto took over the bottom part of that, he had to put in escrow monies on the sales of those to pave the remainder of that Partridge Farm area. Yeah. Sounds like everybody was trying to kick the can down the road. And Vince, I would include in bullet point number five, <coughs> the way you read it when you read it, it's <coughs> including on site at the end past the word discussed. Just to include right, on site it. where yep. we discussed it. Okay, all those in favor? Uh, any more discussion on this? <coughs> all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, town clerk Nemrick module request for discussion or decision for decision. So the, the, the new town clerk has uh, spent some time in uh, East Montpelier, look, and uh, one of the things that they looked at was the, the Nemrick modules, um, and she's done a little bit of research on that and has asked. For out of her budget to spend uh, three hundred dollars to enable those uh, that module for marriage uh, license uh, 
control. Uh, again, it's, it'll be digitizing it and, and that process that way and having them on, on record that way. Um, so that's, that's the request. You want to spend $300 on that module to manage the marriage certificates. Is that 300 a year? Is that on the or just one shot? Usually that's one shot with NEMRIC. We pay a $5,000 a year maintenance. Okay. Questions, but yeah. my so experience has been it's one shot. Um, is that $5,000 based off of what modules you actually are using? Mm -hmm. So we're going to see that go up a little bit, maybe. Maybe. Because we don't really use them that much. I think it's also based on your usage. But, yes. but most of it, most of that $5,000 has to do with um, security. What is uh, what's the acronym NEMRIC stand for? Do you know? New England <laughs> Municipal. Yeah. It's a New uh, England Municipal <laughs> Record. Record. Yeah. Uh, mental record keeping. Information. Record, record information. Yeah. 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 Control. Okay. I make the motion to approve the three hundred dollar request from the town clerk. To NEMRIC for the module request. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Now, where is that coming from? She, she has the money in her budget. We she do. Have to say exactly which line item. I think supplies. I mean, we yeah. do have there are line items we can take out. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, police vehicle bid opening. Yep, you should have uh, the two bids there. Uh, one is a local bid for one vehicle, and I believe the other one is from uh, an outside of the state corporation that has purchased vehicles from us before. I'm going to assume that's for all three vehicles. I think that one that Carl's got is only for the single. Yeah, that there's one paper there with a handwritten bid yep. for one vehicle. I have a bid, it's a sealed bid for three vehicles yeah. uh, to the Select Board Town of Berlin from Ringwood Motors, 5406 Austin Court, Ringwood, Illinois. And inclusive of the bid for the first vehicle, 2016 Ford Explorer with 11, uh, 119,504 miles, 4x4, four four, with the VIN number listed for $5,280. Vehicle number two, the 2014 Ford Explorer with 87,831 miles, also a 4x4 with the VIN number for $4,280. And vehicle number three, a 2013 Chevrolet Tahoe with 69,157 miles, also a 4x4 with VIN number for $3,680. Handwritten bid I have from Wayne Seaver is for the Chevy Tahoe for $2,308. Hmm. Entertain a motion. Let's do them individually since we're going to discuss. Because right. you can take this one and do it individually, can you not? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, uh, motion on the first Ford Explorer. For mm -hmm. 5,280. Since it was the only bill. Only bill. Make the motion to, uh, I guess, approve Ringwood Motors the 2016 Ford Explorer for two for five thousand two hundred and eighty dollars. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, so if, if we're considering uh, um, keeping one of these vehicles for the potential use of our uh, we're not now? I don't think so. Okay. The the money it would take to keep it on the road. Okay. I don't think it's a proper vehicle anyway. All right. Then in that case, that's why I wanted to do them individually. I thought that was still up for discussion. Oh, so. okay. <laughs> yeah. Because we could probably just do this as one. Yeah. 
Uh, we've started. We've started down the path. So okay. I'm sorry. No. Oh, no, that's a oh, question. Well, no, because you have to do it for the Tahoe anyhow. Right. Okay. Uh, anything else on this? Hearing none. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Now for the. When did the last do? No. So this is vehicle number two, 2014 Ford Explorer with 87,831 miles for $4,280 4, or $4,280 to Ringwood Motors. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And now for the Chevy Tahoe. The Chevrolet Tahoe with 69,157 miles for $3,680 to Ringwood Motors. And the other bid was? The other bid was Wayne Seavers um, for $2,308. Second? No. No. <laughs> A motion? Now we move to accept the 3680 bid on the 2013 Chevy Tahoe from Ringwood Motors. Your second? Second. Any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. So you can get a hold of them, Vince. And I will notify them, yeah. Okay, RB Technologies phone system quote. Yes, we'll find that package in there. I believe the total is eleven thousand and eleven thousand three hundred twenty-eight seventy-one, with a recurring cost um, of six hundred and fifty seventy-two. Currently, we're paying a recurring cost of a little under 600. Was it like 582, I believe? No, I think it was like 520. 520? Five, maybe it's 528. I'm dyslexic maybe today. <laughs> um, but uh, it's, it's an old, you'll see a summary from RB Technology as well, but um, the system that we have is old, it's outdated, it's complex. Um, Diane can speak to how well it works when you're trying to make changes to it. Um, and the, the police are, have the same old system that they've had multiple issues with, um, that we've had difficulties getting corrected as well. Uh, and that's kind of, the, kind of the issue behind the driving to upgrade them and bring them more up to date. Uh, RB Tech came in and um, gave us a, a proposal to upgrade our system that will tie into our network as well. That, the new server equipment that we just put in as well. So again, uh, although we can do it with the old system, we're not able to reconnect it uh, without the additional service from TPX um, to get it up and running again. That way, uh, the new system will be uh, fully integrated with that. So if, if we need to uh, access our phone messages or whatever from offsite, we'll be able to do that with this new system. Um, it's it's pretty, pretty comprehensive and uh, much easier to use and will be serviced by RB Tech as well. Where's T TPX out of? I believe they're off the West Coast. Mm -hmm. So they don't, have California. They, don't, they don't have a service? Everything is over the phone with them and you have to go online. You have to, they have to walk us through what needs to be done. Um, you know, for, for almost a, over a year we didn't have any ad, admin access we just barely got it for diane a few months ago from them to be able to even log in and deal with some of our own issues with them um, they're so, not the most responsive so did, did we solicit this bid from rv technology yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, is this something that needs to go out for bid or should go out for bid for a, a uh, well I, I put it out to a couple of other companies that were out of state as well um, and actually none of them bid on it. Hmm. Or I should say none of them, well, actually none of them submitted anything and the, the deadline has come and gone for it, so. 
And what is the age of the system currently? The one that we have now is, is more than seven years that I know of, and I think it may be even more than 10, but I was able to go back at least seven. 2014. So eight, okay. Okay. A motion? I make the motion to approve the bid from RB Technologies um, for setup and one-time fees and installation services totaling $11,328.71 and the monthly expenses summary is $650.72 and that it is inclusive of recurring services and charges. Hear a second? I'll second. On that, Vince, what's the uh, monthly charge on TPX? Uh, like 520. It's a little over 500. So there is a, a bit of an increase in the monthly rate. But a lot of our phones don't function, just, mm -hmm. just especially, you know, for me, okay, it might not be a big deal, but the police, it really is a big deal. Yeah. yeah. People can't. Yeah. Any other discussion? I think everybody's is can, a big can initial, I think everyone's is a big deal as well. I concur. Can the initial uh, payment for insulation be federally funded? Yeah, yeah ARPA funds? Yeah. yeah. That's what you're asking. Yes, it does qualify for that. Any other discussion on this? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion carries. Um, hmm. Meeting minutes, approval of uh, May 16th, June the 6th, June the 20th, and July 6th, and July 18th. I make a motion to approve the May 16th, 2022 minutes as presented with just one uh, adding the time that the meeting adjourned. I'll second that. Any other discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, the June 6th. I make the motion to approve the June 6th minutes as presented with two exceptions, adding in the time that the board exited executive session and the time that we adjourned during that meeting. I'll second that. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, June the 20th. Mm -hmm. I didn't see June 20th. Let's see if I missed it. I make the motion to approve the Monday, June 20th uh, minutes as presented. <coughs> Second that. Um, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. July 6th. I make the motion to approve the Monday, July 6th minutes as presented. I'd like to clarify I think on page three with one change uh, route page 302 the underlying route 302 silver line replacement was that supposed to be silver silver, silver, line? silver? Yeah. Should be silver. yeah I was gonna say I'm gonna stop collecting silver <laughs> <laughs> if that's what it really is yeah. any other changes to it if not those in favor Aye. 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 Motion carries on July the 18th. I make the motion to approve the Monday, July 18th minutes as presented. A second that. Any further discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, applications, 
I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 23-07 for payroll from September 11th to September 24th, 2022, paid on September 28th of this year in the amount of $46,670.15, also payable warrant 23-G06 with checks 22322 to 23348 for payables in the amount of $78,336.55 and the August general journal entries. Second that. Any further discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, round table, Paul? Nothing, thank you. Carl? Uh, just uh, so they are fresh in our mind, um, getting uh, meeting minutes approval a little a little sooner. Yeah, helpful because you'll you'll see another batch um, at the next meeting, and we'll be caught back up to date on that, and it should be good from that point forward. Okay. Uh, Dave, I just I just want to say on back on this this tire issue and and, and things going. Um, Any time that an insurance company or anybody else, uh, you know, uh, uh, tire warranties or anything like that, they're all based on uh, making the person whole again, not making them better than whole. So I think that, and I don't know what the statute is, how this thing falls, but I just think we need to, to do something to protect the town that uh, we're not getting people at a, at a you know, like Carl jokingly said, you know, they're at the end of their tire life. Next thing you know, they're hitting a pothole in town and they're getting four, four tires. Um, I think we, we just need to be careful on that because I know insurance companies and the tire warranty companies, they take the mileage on those tires and they deduct that and they give them a portion of that. Yeah, it's, it's dangerous precedent. <laughs> yeah. Um. Anything else, Dave? No, no, that's it. Joe? I'm good, thank you. <clears throat> Do I dare say, Vince? You dare, but I, I have nothing. <laughs> Mr. Chair. You're all set? <clears throat> are we Are we in for an executive session? No, not tonight. Uh, could could I it be just please remind everyone to sign the documents, sign the, the uh, payrolls as well, make sure. I know we, we again, that one was my fault, uh, the last meeting that we missed it, uh, that's going around tonight. Well, I almost hate to bring this one up, but a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Aye. We are adjourned. <laughs>